Shall we go? The car's right. But you can't blame us because there was a short and a siren. That's not our fault. Lenny's right, Captain. That was a mechanical failure, not a human failure. The short and the siren is a mechanical failure. But failing to get it fixed is a human failure. <laughs> Biggest diamond robbery in all the years I've been with the department this close to making an arrest. <laughs> Would have been a promotion and a raise in salary for me. We're sorry about that, Captain. Well, a promotion and a raise in salary aren't really that important. Well, Captain, with your rank, a raise in salary and a promotion would have meant that you were transferred right out of this precinct. Well, that means that you wouldn't have been able to work with George and I anymore. That's what's important to me. <laughs> uh, Captain, uh... Why don't we put out an APB on the suspect and have him picked up before he can get rid of the diamond? Because we don't know what the suspect looks like. All we know that he was bringing the diamond in from Florida to have the professor cut it up so it would be easier to get rid of. Captain, it stands to reason that if the siren scared off the professor, then the suspect will have to make contact with him again. That's right. And Lieutenant Ferguson will be right behind him. And we'll be right behind Lieutenant Ferguson. What's that? Well, seeing as what happened at the airport was our fault, I think it's only fair that George and I give Lieutenant Ferguson a hand and wrap the case up right away. What do you think, George? Yes, yeah, the least we can do. Oh, no! I don't want either one of you anywhere near that case. <laughs> now, I realize what happened at the airport this morning wasn't really your fault. You just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. I'll buy that. <laughs> uh, you two happen to be victims of bad timing. Now, to show you that my heart's in the right place, uh, I'm going to tear up your report. Uh, Captain... Could I have the pleasure of doing that? <laughs> that wasn't your report. It wasn't? I bought a new car yesterday. That was my bank loan! <laughs> Sorry about that, Captain. Uh, could we give you a lift? Get out! Then I think we did it again. They did it again? They did it again! <laughs> give them to Captain Andrews. Twice in one day. Just when the professor was getting ready to make contact and Ferguson was getting ready to move in, you two arrive on the scene and ruin everything. All we were doing was dropping something off at my house. Now, how did we know that Ferguson was tailing the professor in that area, on that very street, at that moment? It's getting terrible, Captain. Every place we go in the city, Ferguson is there. Frankly, we don't know where to go anymore. That's Ferguson. He'll tell you where to go. <laughs> George, what? I'd take back the grapefruit. <laughs> Well, uh, it's getting late. You two are going on duty. And I'm going home to spend a quiet, restful evening. The kind I usually spend when you're not on duty. Now do me a favor, both of you, and stay away from Lieutenant Ferguson. You know, if the French Foreign Legion was still in existence, we would have lost Ferguson today. <laughs> I'll forget your grave, Rose. And your briefcase. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you, George, and thank your mother for me. Professor, look. Must be him. She's got the grapefruit. George. Oh. 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 Look. Captain Andrews? Oh. Captain Andrews, are you all right? What happened? I was mugged and I was robbed. Somebody held you up and took your wallet? Not my wallet, my grapefruit. Your grapefruit? Whoever the guy was, he must have been starved. Captain of detectives is robbed outside his own precinct in broad daylight. Captain Andrews' office. Oh, I'm Mrs. Robinson. Yes, he's right here. George, your mom. Thank you. I don't hey, understand, no. Captain. Why would they take the grapefruit and not your wallet? I don't know. All I know is he hit me over the head and I dropped the bag of grapefruit and he picked it up and ran. He didn't even look for my wallet. Okay, Ma. Now, I'll talk to you later. And thanks for letting me know. Okay. Something strange going on with that grapefruit. What do you mean? My mother tells me a woman comes to the house. She says she's from the Department of Agriculture and she wants to examine the grapefruit that my mother brought back from Florida. Well, what's so strange about that? There doesn't happen to be a Department of Agriculture branch in this city, crook. That's what's strange about it, go on, George. So, my mother tells her that you've got the grapefruit, and she says that she'll contact you. And the next thing we know, somebody jumps you in the alley and takes the grapefruit. 
Well, keep going, George. That grapefruit was on the plane with my mother, and so was that suspect that the uh, professor was there to meet at the airport. What are you getting at? Something's happened to those grapefruits to make them far more valuable than just an ordinary bag of grapefruit. Of course. If your siren scared off the professor at the airport, it stands to reason it scared off the suspect as well. That's a possibility. It's more than a possibility, it's a probability. Yeah, that's what I say, it's a probability. If you had a hot diamond and the police were closing in on you, what would you do with it? I'd sell it. <laughs> you wouldn't sell it, you'd hide it someplace, you'd get rid of it. No, I think first I'd sell it. <laughs> you'd hide it someplace, you'd get rid of it. No, if you had it, you would hide it. If I had it, I would sell it. No, Lenny, I can't buy that. I'm not trying to sell it to you, George. George, you listen to me. Now, suppose you were the suspect and you had a hot diamond, police are closing in on you, and you have to hide it. And the closest thing to you is a bag of grapefruit. What would you do with it? Sell it. <laughs> hide it in one of the grapefruit. Exactly, and with an innocent looking woman like your mother to carry it out of the terminal for you. It's a perfect place to hide it. That explains why he didn't take your wallet. He was after the grapefruit. Right. Get me Lieutenant Ferguson immediately. It also explains what Professor was doing at your house today. He was after your mother's grapefruit. What do you mean he doesn't answer? He has to be there. He's on stakeout duty. And he wouldn't leave without calling me first. Unless something's wrong. That's the biggest diamond I ever saw. And you boys will never see a more expensive one. I hope not. That one caused us enough grief. You men and Lieutenant Ferguson did an admirable job in handling this case. Thank you, sir. And Lieutenant Ferguson is up for a special commendation as soon as he gets well. He sure took it hard when he looked over the edge of that roof and saw where that grapefruit had landed. It took the both of us to keep him from jumping off the roof. But why did you let him cut open 6,000 grapefruit in that truck without any help? We tried to help him, but he threw a grapefruit at us. Then he held us at gunpoint while he proceeded to cut open every one of those 6,000 grapefruits. Then when he got down to the last grapefruit and found that the diamond wasn't in that one either, he really flipped. But I don't understand. If he cut open every one of the grapefruit and didn't find the diamond, where did this come from? That was in the grapefruit he threw at us. <laughs> Host Vincent Smith and the team of reporters.